it's a coming. Boy or girl? Ain't far enough along yet for a tag. How's Nancy standing? She's a friend. It's a boy. Mm -hmm. It's a boy. Homely as I felt mud fan. What are you allowed to call him, Maddie? Total? No. Good form of... 
No, I don't regulate nobody's drink. Just more. <laughs> In this sense, the term law includes any edict, decree, order, ordinance, statute, resolution, rule, etc. Etc. Well, my old daddy taught me how to work, but he never taught me how to like it. Reckon I'd better keep on with a lesson. I'd rather keep on with something else. You made a bad bargain making me the professor. Well, he told me about that, too. He said if you make a bad bargain, hug it all the tighter. But he didn't mean this kind of a bargain. Well, don't you like it, Anne, when I hold you tight? I guess every girl sort of likes that. Now, Abe, what is law? Well, Professor, law is a rule of human conduct governing Whoa. the... Abe, I ain't paying you no 40 cents a day to spark the pretty gal. Well, Uncle Jimmy, don't charge nothing extra for it. Just throw it in. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'm expecting a sight of rails out of you. He's the best rail splitter in the country. He'll be more than a rail splitter. How old are you, Uncle Jimmy? Mm, Nearer than 40. I'll get you out 40 more rails than you expected. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you better make it near than 70. <laughs> now, Abe, your professor needs a seat where there's more law and less temptation. You all right, Ann? Oh, I think so. Are my, you hurt? My legs are still on me. It scared me worse than it did you. Did it, Abe? You know, Ann, if anything happened to you, I don't think I could live. Funny, Abe. I feel the same about you. You taught me how to love. Have I taught you to like it? It's awful nice this time of day. Yes, Abe. Can I tell you sort of a story, Anne? Why, of course, Abe. Well, there was a town in Illinois called, uh, called, uh... New Salem? Yeah, that's it. And in that town lived the prettiest girl in the world. What was her name? Anne Rutledge. Oh, Abe. <laughs> What I'd like to find out about that girl is, did she, uh, did she ever take a little time off to think about uh, getting married? Well, maybe. Because there's a Abe Lincoln hanging around that's a pretty good catch. What's he like? Oh, he's a big merchant, owner of three stores, all bankrupt. Well, is he handsome? Well, his pa said that Abe had been cut out with an axe. Politician, too, I hear. Yes, he's got less property and owes more debts than anybody ever run for the legislature. 
Oh, Wade, now you'll do all right when you get started. Well, there's something I'd like to start right now if I thought I could finish it. You know, Ann, I... I've always done a lot of dreaming. And lately, it seems, when I dream, your face gets mixed up in it. Does it really, Abe? Tell me about the mixing. Well, I... I feel as though I'm going to be seeing your face till the day I die. Of course, I know that that'll be pretty hard for you to have to look at my face that long. Everybody to their own opinion. Meaning? Well, I, I think it's the dearest, kindest, most beautiful face in the whole world. Oh, man. Man. Of course, I, I know that's just flattery, but I love it. You know, I, I feel like little Jimmy Watkins. He got a hunk of gingerbread the other day and says, I guess there's nobody loves gingerbread like I does and gets so little of it. Oh, Wade. And will you, will you marry me? I mean, of course, when I, when I get out of debt and can support you. Well, you know, Abe, I've intended to for a long while. That is, of course, if you ask me. You... You, you mean... Yes, Abe. You've got... Oh, well. been asking for you. Him as soon as I could. I had the fever pretty bad myself. I've I've got to tell you the truth, Abe. It's it's hopeless. Perhaps by tomorrow. No longer. I'm all right now. I know the truth, dear. It's goodbye. No, no, Anne, dear. You're not going to leave me. I won't let you. We must be brave, dear. Don't take me away. Don't take me away. It's so dark and lonesome going. And you mustn't let go. If they'd sing, I, I wouldn't be so afraid. you so. I love you so.
Getting any better, boy? No, not much. I'll tell you, Doctor. He's just like a sick child. He was lost for five days before we found him. Yeah, I know. We took his pocket knife away from him. We were so feared something might happen. Well, good gracious, Abe, you're looking better. No use trying to talk to him. He just can't answer. Think of something that would just bring him back. I guess time's the only thing. Why? Why should the spirit of mortal be proud? Like a swift fleeting meteor, fast flying cloud. Flash of the lightning, break of the wave. He passes from life to his rest. My goodness, Mary Todd, death sink. He'll be here in a few minutes. The catch of America, Stephen A. Douglas. Just think of being his wife. Don't be in such a hurry, sister. I'm not even engaged yet, much less married. But if he should propose, how do I know he's going further than anyone else in Springfield? And I pick a husband, sister. I'll pick a man. But I don't know what you're talking about. A lot of people seem to think a man named uh, Abraham Lincoln is going even further than Mr. Douglas. Why, Mary Todd, have you gone crazy? You compare an unknown cornfield lawyer with a brilliant, cultured gentleman like Stephen A. Douglas? Why, if you just saw the two of them together, oh, you'd know. Oh, here. Mr. Douglas is down in the parlor and he's asking for Mary. Oh. Now, Mary, you must be very careful. And remember now, he doesn't like to have girls too bold. Don't get so excited, you sister. Be. And don't hurry me. I'll take care of myself. through the dance like grace itself, Miss Todd. Always a politician, Mr. Douglas. Who wouldn't be a politician with so fair a constituent to win? <laughs> Exquisite. The fan, Mr. Douglas? No, the fair owner herself. May I look at uh, Mr. Douglas, I wonder if you'd do me a great favor. Uh, yes. And pray present me to this young lady. Uh, Miss Todd? Yes. May I present one of the leading lawyers of uh, Springfield? Mr. Abraham Lincoln. Mr. Lincoln? Miss Todd, I wonder if you'd honor me with the next dance. Why? Why? I'd be delighted. 
jokes, Todd. You thought my face was funny and the way I dressed even funnier, but the joke's on you. Uh, I don't understand. Wait till you dance with me. <laughs> Did you get the license, Mr. Lincoln? Well, she got you. I knew she would when she started out the first time for you. Now, Billy, don't bother me. I'm going to be married and I'm scared to death. Oh, don't be alarmed. There's many a bite that's worse than a bride. Yes, but Billy, that woman scares me. Why, well, she's even got the ridiculous idea that I could get to be president. Oh, don't take that seriously. Every spunky girl thinks her husband ought to be president. I know, Billy, but it's a pity to fool her. And she's a fine woman, smart as Pepper and pretty, too. She'll be a great help to you, Mr. Lincoln, but you've got to keep climbing with her. Yes, yes, I know. I've got the best supper you ever tasted, and the cake. Mmm. Well, you see that cake. Well, what can have happened to Mr. Lincoln? It's long after the... He would be late at his own wedding. Now, never mind, Mary. If he doesn't come soon, I'll send John after him. He's hours late already. Now, Think of that. No, sister. But you're... Calm yourself. Oh. For heaven's sake, you've got to hurry. Hey, Billy, you, you go ahead. You go on over, and I'll, and I'll come later. I doubt if there's a word in the dictionary that could tell how I feel. Say, Billy, what does a man do if his head's all right, but his legs are cowardly? Well, my cure is to get drunk. Well, my legs are too frightened to pay any attention to liquor. <laughs> well, I'll go ahead and tell him that you're coming. And... And everywhere. But we can't find him. No, can't find him. Not at the office. Well, what on earth happened to him? Well, he was in a terrible state when I left him. He was so frightened and upset. I imagine he just ran away. Oh, ran away? From me? On our wedding day? Now, sister dear. Don't you... listen to me. Can you imagine? That's what it's hard to get for, engaging herself to a country baboon. Oh, Mary, dear, you want to go home. You hear me? You mean it's a long home. Not going to be the wedding here. Long home is not possible. Oh, so this is so distressing. You certainly are a matchmaker. To reconcile those two after what happened two years ago. Well, we all like Mr. Lincoln. And Mary is just the girl to push him along. Oh, Mary. How sweet you look. What a lovely dress. Yes, it's so becoming to a George. Oh, oh, maybe that's Mr. Lincoln now. Because it all seems so strange, having things end this way. It's just as it should end. You and Mr. Lincoln will make a great man. Good morning, Mr. Lincoln. Good morning. Good morning. It, it, come, my dear, we'll leave the happy pair alone. Good morning, Mary. I, uh, I, uh, Mary, you don't have to bother about me anymore. I think I've settled down at last. I hope I can make your future all you desire. We'll say no more about it, Mr. Lincoln. I really think, after all, you need me. You need a lot of patience to put up with me, Mary. But if anyone can do it, I'm sure you're the one. <laughs> oh, Mary.
the prize speaker with this weight till old age gets a hold of him oh, all the labor is. You're crazy. Dave Lincoln has no more chance of being Douglas for Senate than I have. Why? He only went to school for three months. <laughs> I will not throw much. <laughs> Let each state mind its own business, and this republic can exist forever, divided into free and slave states. Right, right. <laughs> not allow the extension of slavery to any state. We will not allow the secession of any state. Above all and before all, the Union must be preserved. <laughs> Divided against itself must Oh, Mary. You must be tired, Mr. Lincoln. Sit down. Will you just sit right here. I'll get your supper for you in a minute. Billy, I feel like the little boy that stubbed his toe. It hurt too bad to laugh, and he was too big to cry. I'm 50 years old, Billy, failure and everything. I died today, nobody'd ever know I'd live. Come in. Mr. Lincoln, I want you to meet Mr. Fell, one of the most important men in Eastern politics. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Fowl. I'm honored indeed, Mr. Lincoln. Meet my partner, Mr. Herndon. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Herndon? Happy to meet you, sir. Would you sit down, gentlemen? Thank you. Mr. Lincoln, your campaign against Douglas has made you a national figure. I am here to ask you if you will consider being the Republican Party's candidate for the presidency. Did you say a failure in everything? Telegram to you, Mr. Fell. Oh, thank you. Mr. Lincoln, you know, ever since John Brown's raid, the South has been infuriated. The East on the verge of revolt. And now, New York threatens to quit the Union. No, no, New York mustn't do that. They must keep the front door on the hinge. There can be no secession. 
The Union must be preserved. The crisis is at hand, Mr. Lincoln, and we believe you are the man. Well, gentlemen, I... I feel deeply grateful. Pa, Mom says if you don't come out home, you won't get no supper. You see, Mr. Farrell, I have another crisis. The soup and the country are boiling over together. <laughs> Ma's boiling, too. It needs deep consideration. Well, Mr. Lincoln, maybe we meet you at our hotel later. I'll be there within the hour. Thank you. Come on, Pa. Come on, Pa. We're started it. This is going to mean war. The jockey sword himself. John Brown and a gang of abolitionists have captured the army at Harper's Ferry. Arming the slaves to rise up and murder us all. Yup. They give us all rifles. And what you do with yours? What I do? I'll throw to death. Now if they see you trip. They can't invade Virginia. No. <laughs> Boys, Go home and get your guns. What's all this talk about guns? This thing has gone far enough. We'll be murdered in our beds by our own slaves. Pardon me, ladies, while I find out about this desecration. John Brown, eh? Abolitionist. It's an outrage. Outrage isn't for work. I'll shoot on sight every abolitionist who dares defile the soil of old Virginia. Who's he? That's the actor, John Wilkes Booth. Can't act, but the women don't know it. All right, men. Get your guns, and we'll meet at the square. At the square! At the square! <laughs> can't say much for her disposition. Hush, you may hear you. So you can be. They can't even carry drugs. Here you. No, the stupid looking one. Put that over there. And you idiot. Good heavens, don't look at me like a duck in a thunderstorm. Hurry. Hurry, will you put me in there? I saw such a lot of incompetence. And as for you with the whiskers, I told you to put him in there. Oh, is it going to take forever? Thank heaven, that's the last. Imbecile. Well, Mary, we're here. Yeah, thanks to me. If it wasn't for my advice, you'd be out in Oregon chopping trees. Yes, you're always right, Mary. Well, I found out one thing, Abraham Lincoln. Servants here are no better than they are in Springfield. This place hasn't been cleaned in over a year. Why, Mr. President. Huh? Then we agree that the situation of our country is most ominous. Most alarming. Certainly. We agree that we must yield to the demands of the South and evacuate Fort Sumter. Absolutely. It's the only solution. That must be done. We agree that our president must be firmly guided by us. We must make every effort to control his inexperienced judgment. We certainly must. Yes. Gentlemen. President. Uh, President. Good morning, Mr. President. Thank you, Hayes.
Thank you, gentlemen. I will shoulder all responsibility. The relief shall go to Fort Sumter. That means war. Mr. Seward, I am a man of peace. But the Union shall be preserved. Might be difficult to get that many volunteers. President, the people demand a victory, and we've got to take Richmond. The country is discouraged. We must do something, Mr. President. Well, that reminds me of a story about a man building a boat to cross a river. He got impatient building the boat and started swimming. Well, sir, what happened? He drowned. And gentlemen, we've got to be careful not to drown this country. Ready here. Ready here. One minute to general. Yes. Ready here. Ready here. Ready. Ready. I'm going out. Well, how did you make out? Make out? He darn near kissed me. Yeah. Oh, Secretary of War. Steve Boyd was just licking the tar out of him all along the line. <laughs> Who's next? I am. Gosh, I hope it's for the president. I'd like to see his face when he hears the good news. Huh? <laughs> Any here? Right. Commissary. Applause! General Scott, Mark Thomas. Mark it. It's victory! <laughs>
Well, General Scott, what news? We're winning, sir. I'm sure of it. Oh, I, I, I wish. Come in. Rebel resistance broken at Bull Run. Our army sweeping everything before it. Mr. President, if we can capture Richmond now, it means the end of the war. Oh, thank God. And you, sir, this victory will silence your enemies forever. And you will be the greatest president in our history. Well, it, it doesn't matter what they think of me, General. We will have saved the Union. Yes. General, would you, would you mind letting me have that telegram? I'd, I'd like to show it to Mrs. Lincoln myself. Why, certainly not, Mr. President. And would you mind not calling me Mr. President? Just Lincoln. All right, Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Ready here? Headquarters. Scott, all messages for General Scott hold. All messages for General Scott hold. All messages for General Scott hold. Stand. Stand. General Scott hold. Commanding off. Eddie. Ready here? By the President. Bad news? Yes, sir. Give it to me. news now. And the first report? Overconfidence. Yes, I, I should have known. Impossible to reform line. The men are a confused mob. Entirely demoralized. You must make every effort to save Washington. Reserves are gathering, sir. How many regulars can we muster? About 5,000. Hmm. Volunteers? Doubtful, sir. Can we hold Washington? We'll do our best, sir. Mr. Hayes, is it true we have to get out of Washington? Be very serious, madam. For heaven's sakes, what sort of an army have we anyhow? They did the best they could, Mrs. Lincoln. They might have considered us. It'll take forever to get those trunks packed. I'm sorry, madam. For all of us. Well, Miss Lincoln, I hear we're leaving. Just a moment, Mary, please. Well, after all the trouble we had getting here, I must say we had a very short stay. Mary, I've hung up my hat right here days till they knock it off with a bayonet. From now on, Mary, I'm going to run this war. No 
Counsel for the accused, have you anything further to say in defense of the prisoner? No, sir. The court finds you guilty, and the sentence, death. Just a minute. The president, head John. You must pardon me, gentlemen, for this intrusion. I overheard one of our soldiers sentenced to death. Yes, Mr. President. A bad example of cowardice and desertion. Well, young man, tell me about it. I think the findings of the court were just, sir. Uh... Is that all you have to say? Well, sir, it was our first big battle. We were trying to take a stone wall. We've been trying, it seems, for years. Go on. Finally, though, we got there. I was fighting, bayonet. We were all crazy. On top of the wall, Yes? There was my boyhood chum, looking up at me from the ground. No, no, sir. Not alive. We had killed him a long time ago. But I knew him. And then? I guess I went really crazy, sir. That's all. Your captain reports that you threw your rifle away. Yes, sir. That must be right, sir. Making excuses, Colton? Oh, no, sir, only... Oh, get it over with, quick! Hanging. Killing. Blood. I'm tired. My generals are right. We must maintain discipline. That's all. Wait a minute. Bring that young man back. I have it. It's a leg case. I beg your pardon, sir? A leg case. Yes, yes, my, my shelves are full of them. But not quite like this one. If the Lord Almighty gives a man a cowardly pair of legs and that man gets frightened, he, he can't help his legs running away with him, can he? Young man, I'm going to pardon you. Go back and do your duty. Oh, I will, sir. I will. I'm trusting you. Mr. President, my state of New York is crying out against this endless slaughter. And mine, sir. They are holding services here today, sir, for those who were sacrificed, as they are everywhere. From the east to the west, sir. It can't go on, sir. New England, the west, the entire country, are in mourning for this useless waste of lives. Let the southern states go their way, Mr. President, and we will go ours. For I tell you, Mr. President, that... Don't you think it's time for little boys to be in bed, Tad? But I want to stay up with you. But your mother? If you say so, she can't make me. You're the president. Tad, I suppose you're the only person in the country who thinks I should have any authority. Run along. No, I want to stay with you. Please, can I, Daddy? Ah, uh, we're very busy here now, Tad. Run along. All right, Daddy. 
Good night. Good night. Please try. Good night. Gentlemen, don't you suppose my heart bleeds for all the sorrows this war has brought upon us? Do you suppose there is a human being who wants peace more than I do? But we want lasting peace. And we can have that only by preserving the Union. And gentlemen, the Union is going to be preserved. And by virtue of the power and for the purpose aforesaid, I do order and declare that all persons held as slaves within said designated states and parts of states are henceforward and forever shall be free. Gentlemen, it is done. More bad news, eh? I'm afraid there is. Well, let's have it. The Secret Service reports that there are 600,000 copperheads in the North. Under oath and armed. To get me? Yes. Mm, well, that many ought to keep me dodging. We're taking every precaution to guard you. Where are they mostly? Ohio has 100,000 armed men ready to rise up and depose you. Illinois, 135,000. Illinois. My old stamping ground. Mm. That makes me feel badly. You mustn't tell Mary. But Mr. President, we are worried about you. Don't mind me, eh? Go on to bed, you're tired. Mr. Lincoln, come on to bed. I'm worried, Mary. You can't win this war worrying and walking around your sock and feet. I can't sleep. Neither can I. At least we could sleep in Springfield, couldn't we? Did we ever sleep? I've got it, Mary. I found the man to win this war. And his name is Grant. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mr. President. But smoking is one of my most persistent habits. And winning victories is another. Thank you. And you do believe in me, sir? I sent for you. General, the North is desperate. We need you. And should I assume command? There would be no interference? None. I promise you that. Grant, Lieutenant General is the highest army command the President can bestow. 
haven't had one since General Washington. He was a fair sort of a soldier, too. Lieutenant General Grant, my orders are win the war. I'll give my best, Mr. President. I know you will. Unfortunately, many of us have failed to recognize a great Confederate soldier, Lee. On the other hand, we have thus far failed to take advantage of a great Northern soldier. I hope I am not too late in correcting the error. Well, Mr. President, I think it only fair to warn you. Many people don't approve of me. Not of me. But rest assured, there will be no interference. No intrusion. There are more people. Who locked your door? My wife. All right, Mary. Land sake. Where did all the smoke come from? Mary, meet General Grant. Mrs. Lincoln. It's a pleasure indeed to meet the First Lady of the land. Thank you. I want to talk to you, Miss Lincoln. But Mary, we... I want to talk to you about discharging some of the servants in this house. <coughs> in here, with all this smoke. <coughs> Why don't you open the window? <coughs> I can't stand it. Pardon me, General. <coughs> I'll have to talk to you later. <coughs> Very sorry, Mike. There, there, General. No apologies. You've given me an idea. I may take up smoking myself. <laughs> but to resume, General. We will give you all the help you need. Every man capable of bearing arms shall go. We've got to win this war. It is a duty we owe the South as well as the North. It's a big job, Mr. President. A big job. But I will be done. I will be done. We're in a tight place now. Yes, we generally are, Stanton. Everything depends upon Sheridan. He's a fighting Irishman. Then why doesn't he fight? One division, Sheridan's army routed. Now trying to hold left flank. Ah, oh, the blood it takes to hold this union together. It will undo everything Grant has done. It's hopeless. I don't think so. Before each victory, I've had a vision of a ship with white sails. That vision has just come to me. With all respect, sir, I'd rather trade your ship for good news from Sheridan. Is that General Sheridan in there? Sure, it is General Sheridan. Does that sound like cannon fire? I don't hear anything, sir. Good ears. Pretty good one that was. Well, then try them. You hear anything like cannon fire? It's cannon, all right. Over by the swamp. They may have caught General Rand by surprise. Mount those horses.
Sheridan's entire army has met an overwhelming defeat. Incredible. And no word from Sheridan. I'm afraid he was away. It means the defeat of all our plans. Yes, but we'll have to withdraw Grant from Richmond to protect Washington. Time to reform forces, have struck the enemy, and have won an overwhelming victory. Sheridan! I knew it. I knew it. Better than better. Look. Here. Tremendous number of prisoners. Prisoners? Oh, I, I hope there's nothing but prisoners from now on. The ship, Stanton. Yes, Mr. President. And Sheridan.
surrender my poor army. I'd rather die a thousand deaths than do that to them. There, there, General. You must lie down and rest. Rest. That's a beautiful word. They've caught a spy, and they want the order for his execution approved, sir. <laughs> Colonel Marsh, who was that? Only a courier, sir. What did he want? They've caught a spy. I approve the execution order, sir. Colonel, the only reason for shooting a spy is the protection of an army, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well, you and I know that this army can't exist much longer. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. That is why I am unwilling that there shall be a single life lost unnecessarily. I wonder if you'd mind countermanding that order. I will, yes, sir. Mr. President, we have them. It can only last a few days more. General Sherman and I are glad of this chance to talk with you. The Union. We've saved it at last. It must surrender soon. The Union. We'll have them all back. United, free. One country. And meanwhile, Mr. President, I've heard the country wishes all rebel property confiscated and the rebel generals, such as Lee, shot for treason. He's put up a grand battle. And they've robbed the cradle and the grave, sir. And General Lee is fighting with his last breath. Shoot Robert E. Lee? Someone will have to shoot Abraham Lincoln first. They're rebels, not traitors. And their horses and baggage, sir? They'll need them for the spring plowing. Let them keep them and get to work. Very good, sir. Oh, just one thing more, Mr. President. The head of the rebel government, uh, Jefferson Davis. Jefferson Davis. Yes, do you wish his capture? Well, that reminds me of a story. We had a terrible drunkard once in Springfield. Finally, he signed the pledge. 
The next day, he got thirsty and went to a bar and ordered a lemonade. While the bartender was fixing it, the old drunk got sadder and sadder. Finally, he leaned over and said to the bartender, Mike, while you're fixing that, couldn't you put a nice little shot of whiskey in it, unbeknownst to myself? Well, sir. Couldn't you sort of let Jeff Davis escape, unbeknownst to yourself? Well, we'll do our part, sir. We're going to take them back as though they'd never been away. He freed the Negroes. He suppressed the right of trial by jury. He muzzled the press. Now, with the aid of his bayonets, his army and his Negroes, he'll make himself King of America. Lincoln. I drink to him. And his damnation! Right. You're right. For my part. Go on. You're among friends. The man who kills Abraham Lincoln will be an immortal. Now listen. I plan on going. Do you mind my smoking? Uh, Mrs. Lincoln? No, not much. I don't know how glad we all are that you were re-elected, Mr. President. I'm sure this lady will be glad to spend four more years in the White House. Glad? I've just hired two new maids. Abraham Lincoln, will you ever learn to keep your feet in shoes? Oh, uh, by the way, Mrs. Lincoln, have you met General Grant? I met him. Took us a week to get the smoke out of the curtain. <laughs> Yes, Ogilvy, he's one human being who has faults. A party of prohibitionists called on me the other day and complained about Grant's drinking. I told them if they could find out what brand he uses, I'd send barrels of it to my other generals. <laughs> <laughs> Two new maids. Hmm. And we're going to be here four more years. Four years. Four more years. Now, Mr. Lincoln, don't you go thinking about any of those dreams again. You live to a hundred. And after we set everything right over here, we'll travel around the world and have a nice, long rest. Oh, Daddy, won't that be fun? You're not going without me. Why, of course not, Ted. You can depend on Mother Surratt. And everything's straight with me. I said I'd go through with it. And I will. Tonight will be remembered throughout the ages. I play my best part. How much better a dagger would look. Cassius used a dagger. But this is safer.
again, I... I say. With malice toward none. With charity for all. With firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right. We shall bind up the nation's wounds and cherish peace. That government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you. God bless you all. Mr. Lincoln, I'm, I'm just proud of you. Here, Peanut, hold my horse for me, will you? Yes, sir. Will you be long, sir? No, not very long. Would you mind bringing me a glass? I feel it proud. No, I, I'm afraid you must be mistaken. Uh, Mr. Lincoln has just stopped the draft. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, if it wasn't for that eternal servant critter with brass buttons on his nose. <laughs> 